second graders. So today we're going to be still working on changing landforms. We're going to be working on lesson 2.6 today. So we are going to be skipping lesson 2.5 uh, because we do not have the materials here to do them. But we're still in good shape to wrap up this chapter and still get to the same end goal. So today we're really going to be focusing on explaining how the cliff changed and we'll be doing this by completing all three activities. Okay, so just a reminder is our chapter two question was how did the recreation center's cliff change? So we've gathered a lot of information from books and investigations about how landforms erode. Remember that erode means to wear down or break away at something to make it into smaller pieces. And so now we're ready to explain to Director Higgins how the cliff has changed. So today you guys are gonna be doing an activity with a partner at home. Um, this is to get you guys started to begin thinking about what we're gonna actually be writing down in our explanation today. So there's three different steps to this process. So step one is I'm going to ask you a question and you are gonna share for one minute while someone at home listens to you. That can be another adult at home, that could be an older sibling, um, anybody that you can talk to. Step two is your partner is going to repeat what you said and then they will agree or disagree with your point. And then the very last step is that you are going to repeat what your partner said and then you will say if that has changed your mind or not. So our first question today is how do landforms change shape? So I'm gonna read through the sentence stems quickly for you guys and then you'll go ahead and actually pause the video and share. So you're going to start off by saying landforms change shape because blank. Your partner will go ahead and say, I heard you say, and they'll repeat what you said. And then they will also add on, I agree or disagree because blank. And the very last part, which is step three, you are going to say, I heard you say blank, which is where you'll fill in what your partner said. This changed or didn't change what I think because blank. So go ahead and pause this video so you have the sentence stems up in front of you and just find somebody at home that you can talk to really quickly uh, to answer our question, how do landforms change shape? Okay, so now you guys are gonna go ahead and write down your thinking based on the conversation that you had with your partner. So in your packet, this is gonna be your first question. If you do not have a packet, then you can just kind of talk to that same person, but just try and formulate in one whole answer. How do landforms change shape? So you guys can go ahead and pause the video and answer that question. Okay. So we're going to repeat that same three-step process with another question now. So remember, you are going to state your idea, your partner is going to repeat what you said, and then agree or disagree, and then you will repeat what your partner said and tell them if it changed your mind or not. So our second question is, how did the recreation center's cliff change? So you can go ahead and pause the video and use these sentence stems to answer the question with somebody at home. Okay, now we're going to take our thoughts from what you just talked about with your person at home, and now we're actually going to go ahead and write it down. So, same question, how did the recreation center's cliff change? You guys can go ahead and answer this question by writing it down in your packet. If you do not have your packet, you can practice just telling your partner in one full answer how the cliffs changed, or you can go ahead and think about it in your head. All right, guys, so... We are going to be working on activity two for lesson 2.6, which is our critical juncture, and we're going to be diagramming the cliff. So, um, remember that a diagram is another way that we can show um, something bigger, and, and it's just an easier way of showing it. So, does your diagram still represent your ideas, or have your ideas changed based on the evidence that we've gathered? So we worked on this diagram in our first lesson of chapter two. And remember that we were talking about our ideas about what might have caused the cliff to change. So I want you guys to stop and take a minute to go back into your packet and look back at this activity and see what you wrote down in the blank to think about what could have caused the cliff to change. Um, and then I want you to think about if your ideas are still the same as they were before or if they have changed at all. So remember that diagrams can be models and scientists use them to explain and clarify their ideas. Scientists base their, their ideas on evidence. 
if they gather new evidence that changes their ideas about how something happens, they can go back and revise their diagrams, which is what we're going to do right now. So our key concept for this was scientists make diagrams to show their ideas about how the world works based on evidence from investigations, models, and books. And we've been doing all of these things when we investigated the flower. We've looked at a bunch of different models of cliffs and diagrams, and we have also read the book What's Stronger um, to help us get a little bit more ideas for how we can answer that question about how the cliff changed. So this page is very similar to the one that we completed a few lessons ago, and we're going to draw a new diagram to show our new ideas. So very similarly, um, we have the first part of our diagram. Um, so the first picture said the flagpole on the cliff was not very close to the edge of the cliff. So then we're going to be thinking about somewhere in between a long time ago and now something happened and you guys are going to use what you have learned throughout this chapter to think about what changed in the middle. And then number three says, now the flagpole is closer to the edge of the cliff than it was a long time ago. This is because the cliff changed shape. So in those blanks, you're going to be thinking about what caused the cliff to change shape using what you know from our investigations, from our models, from our readings, what do you think caused it to change shape? So you can go ahead and pause this video and complete this diagram in your packet. If you do not have your packet, then you can go ahead and just talk to somebody at home or think in your head, what could have caused that to change? Okay, and so really quickly, we're just gonna talk about what we know from all of the things that we've done so far. So again, we know that a long time ago, the flagpole was further away. In the middle, something changed. And at the end, the flagpole was closer because the cliff changed shape. So when I'm thinking about all of the different things that we learned in chapter two, one really important thing that we learned was erosion, which is breaking down something into smaller bits or wearing away at something. I know that erosion can happen to a lot of our landforms. For example, I know, and I keep going back to this example, but mountains over time because of the wind little bits of rock will fall off of that mountain and cause it to erode um, and same thing with water we learned a lot in this chapter that water can change the shape of a cliff too and i know that this cliff is near water so my thoughts might be that maybe the water caused the cliff to erode or change shape or maybe it could be due to something like wind that's also causing that cliff to change shape because of erosion and then you guys can go on to the next video to do our very last activity for this chapter. All right, guys, we're on our very last activity today for lesson 2.6. And this is going to be our writing a scientific explanation based off of all the things we've just talked about with our cliff changing. Okay, so first off, what is a scientific explanation? So there's a couple of different important pieces to writing a good scientific explanation. So one, it answers a question. Two, it's based on science ideas that you have learned. So based on all of these things that we've talked about in our slides, things we've read about, models, investigations that we've done. Um, number three is it's shared with somebody. And number four is it uses science words or vocabulary that we've gone over throughout the lesson. So the first sentence of our explanation will answer our chapter two question. So our question again was how did the recreation center's cliff change? We're going to be using scientific language or scientific vocabulary to discuss this. And we're already going to be starting off with a sentence stem that is the recreation center's cliff changed because blank. So here's an example of a way that we could fill that in. So we can complete a sentence like this. The recreation, recreation center's cliff changed because water hit it. We're using information that we've learned in our story so far because we know that the cliff is located near the water. We know that water can change landforms because we've read about it in our books and we've investigated it with the flower. So we're going to complete the first sentence for our scientific explanation in your packet based on what we just wrote. And you guys are going to go ahead and do this in your own packets. And if you do not have a packet available, then even just copying what we have written so far on a blank piece of paper will work. 
So what are some other ideas that we have about what happens when water hits the cliff? So I want you guys to really take a minute to think about what we've learned so far in this chapter and what we know about how water can actually change a landform. So take a second to just think about your ideas. Okay, so your task is going to be that you are gonna complete your explanations using key concepts, vocabulary, and evidence, and your evidence chart to help guide your writing. So you can look back at all the materials that we have in our packet um, for this chapter and for the last chapter and go ahead and complete the rest of the explanation on your own. So you can pause the video and then we will go ahead and talk together at the end. Okay, and just to go back to this, um, I'm not gonna give out the, the full answer, but I will just give us a couple of ideas so that you guys can also begin to think on your own. Um, so we know that water is something that can change a landform and we know this because in our readings, we investigated a couple of different um, landforms that included water, um, whether it was frozen or not, such as we talked about glaciers, we've talked about how rivers can change valleys, um, and we know that when water is hitting our landforms, erosion is happening, and we remember that erosion is when things are breaking down, and when things are breaking down, it's actually changing the shape of our landform. So in the next lesson, we're gonna to continue to investigate the cliff eroding, and we're gonna to try to figure out how the cliff eroded without anybody noticing it. So that's the end of chapter two. You guys are all done. So I look forward to meeting back up with you guys for chapter three.